Hello everyone, what we have here is a video for Tears of Avia. I'm going to show you a simple way to win almost every fight except for the boss fights um, and by the first turn. It's pretty straightforward, not hard to execute. It's definitely very cheesy though, so if you're looking for a way to do it, you know, like a, some super crazy strategy or something, uh, this isn't it. It's just brain dead exploitation of a skill that probably doesn't work the way it should, but who cares? Uh, this is my first time attempting commentary, so if it sucks, sorry in advance, I have no clue what I'm doing. Uh, but anyway, let's get into it. For the skills, uh, the one that matters the most is Martyr, which is a warrior skill, uh, top of the far right tree. So probably looking at level 10 or 11 before you can do it. Uh, so maybe the first 10 stages of the game you'll have to do but then after that, you can do it you know, this way and uh, do it much more easily. So what Martyr does, it takes every condition that your party has and transfers it to the enemy. Uh, the reason it's so good is because it doesn't do it at a one-to-one -one ratio. If you have a party member that has a burn, it doesn't give it to one enemy. It gives it to every enemy. So this, basically the way the strategy works is you take every condition, uh, all the damaging ones, bleeding, poison, and burn, put it on your characters and then use martyr to put it on the enemies then they die from the damage and that's it so martyr is the most important skill uh, notice it takes 50% of your maximum HP so don't use it if you're low on health because you'll kill your character and on hardcore that's really gonna feel bad uh, once you level it up to level 5 though it goes down to 10% of your max life so uh, make sure you I prefer well, I guess obviously you can't do it as soon as you get the skill, but as you get money, make sure that you put uh, shards into this so that way you can lower the HP cost. Other than Martyr, you want Firebolt for the mages uh, because it gets burn, and then you want Poison Arrows for Poison from the Ranger, and then Thorns, which is also a Ranger skill. And then finally, you're going to want Angelic Boon from Repeat Priest, what it does is it, it gives the character a second action. So that's how first turn Reyna can use both thorns and poison arrows. So those five skills are what matter. Uh, Angelic Boon for the Priest, Martyr for the Warrior, Fireball for the Mage, and then thorns and a poison arrow from the Ranger. As for equipment, all that really matters is that your Mage and Ranger don't have anything that boosts their skills, or their damage rather. So Mages don't want intelligence, and then rangers don't want uh, attack. Make sure they have hit. For some reason, it's possible for skills and spells to miss. And it seems like when you have the hit attribute uh, pumped up with some equipment, then it doesn't miss. Ever since I put these weapons that have hit on them both, they haven't missed. But without them, uh, Reyna wouldn't hit her poison arrows most of the time, and Fireball wouldn't always hit. So make sure you have that. The other three, I would just equip them normally. Um, bunch of defensive stats and attack. You want enough attack to one-shot things, and then from there you just want a bunch of defense. Um, I want to make sure to equip them normally, uh, because if you you know somehow screw up, maybe you go into the stage and, and your mage and ranger are properly equipped, and then they'll one-shot your characters, and obviously you don't want to do that, so you can just do the stage normally. Uh, but that's basically the two main things. Just equip these three normally, and then the Mage and Ranger should have just defensive stats. And probably, I guess, something with SP on it, so that way they can use their abilities. Although I don't think the cost for those skills are very high, but whatever. Anyway, uh, to do it, you just go into a stage. Uh, we'll do one of the last ones here. Yeah, like I said, it doesn't work on bosses and the water elementals for whatever reason. They have like a guardian skill which blocks a condition, so it's possible they can block uh, one of your damaging status effects. Uh, but like I said, it's an early enemy, so it doesn't really matter because you won't really face it that much by the time you do this strategy. Uh, but anyway, once you're in this stage, what you want to do is move all of your characters back away from the enemy and then put your tankiest character uh, near the nearest the enemies. For me, that's the priest. She's got 48,000 HP, so she can take a couple hits. Once you've got them all out on the field, then you want to put the, the conditions down. So uh, Thorns doesn't actually do any direct damage, so you can just put it on whatever. 
And then uh, you want to have Romeo use Angela Boone. That will allow Rainda to go again. I have no clue why I have the panel animations all of a sudden. But anyway, uh, you want to use poison arrows on somebody to give them poison. And then you want to have your mage use Firebolt. Uh, we'll do it on this one. So now I've got a bunch of status effects on my characters, and I have someone use. Oh, see, she doesn't have HP, so <laughs> so she can't use it. SP rather. So then I use the other ward to do it. Again, sorry, I don't know why the animations are playing. I thought I turned them off. Uh, but anyway, once you use Martyr, then you'll see that every single enemy gets every single stats effect. So this stage, the hardcore effect is that when you use a range skill, you get freeze. So that's why they also have freeze. This won't happen in most stages. But uh, you'll see that they all have it. That's why this skill is so strong. Uh, Martyr's broken, basically. Uh, so you can also do it with other effects, like stun and stuff like that. But obviously, if you just kill everything, it doesn't really matter if you stun it. So, uh, as you'll see, after the enemies do their first turn, they'll start dying from the stats effects, like this. And that's why this is so strong, because you never get even get into attack range of the vast majority of enemies on the stage, and they die. Um, for whatever reason, the bosses will actually show the stats effects of the conditions, but they won't take damage from it. Stun doesn't stun them, you know, freeze and whatever doesn't stop their movement. So uh, don't go into a boss fight thinking it'll work just because the, the stats effects show up. And then in Water Elementals, they have the Priest Skill Guardian, which blocks stats effects. So there's a chance that that Guardian will block, you know, burn or poison or bleeding. And then they won't die first turn. Um, these all die in two turns, but not all enemies do. Some take three. I have no clue why. Uh, that's why we do three stats effects instead of two is to make sure that they all die. Uh, since water elementals can block one stats effect, if they block one of the damaging ones and they s might survive with like four HP, uh, that's why they're kind of annoying. But like I said, they're an early game enemy. And on top of that, they don't really seem to attack. So, you know, it'll kill all the other enemies and then you can just chase down the water elementals and kill them and win the stage that way. Um, this works on every single stage except for the four boss ones. Every other stage, you can just clear just fine with this. Um, other than that, there's not really much to say. That's uh, how the strategy works.